Um, thank you guys for joining in, uh, waiting for more people to join in, and then we'll start in a few. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. My name is Lynette Akeo. I am from Inuka, Kenya, Nisisi. And um, today, just a reminder, we've been having a wellness clinic from the 2nd of May. Uh, coincidentally, it's been running uh, in, alongside May, which is the month for mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, the first topic that we had, we had art for mental wellness. And then also last week on Thursday, we spoke on the role of personality types um, at the workplace. And in the event that you attended both, we thank you very much. Um, the whole session is on our social media pages. You can check on our YouTube. You can also check on Twitter. There's a link that is provided at EA Wellness and at Nisisi Kenya YouTube page, you can get the previous um, topics that we had shared. For this particular week, we will be talking about uh, demystifying stress. And um, for today, I'm stepping in for Salima Masharia, who is our wellness officer, who has traveled to Kisumu. Uh, as we are all aware, Mama Victor unfortunately passed on uh, by the, was swept away by the floods in Madari. And she will be laid to rest uh, on Friday. Um, so she has struggled to offer solidarity and support to the HRDs and the family of Mama Victor. So we hope and pray that all will be well. It's a tough time for the human rights defenders, especially in Madari, because they've lost a strong pillar in the in their lives. Um, for this week, our facilitator will be Yvonne Gache. I don't want to, I hope I haven't uh, butchered your name, but um, I encourage you to ask a lot of questions on the chat box. If you need to speak, you can just raise up your hand, um, but I'd like her to introduce herself so that she can take away the session. 
and let's have a language session all together. Everyone, welcome. Thank you, Lynette. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on uh, this session on demystifying stress. My name, as uh, Lynette light, uh, rightly said, my name is Yvonne Gache. I am a counseling psychologist by training and a critical psychologist by practice. Critical not because I'm critical of psychology, but because throughout the years of practice, I have come to find that psychology is more than just an individual issue and it is a social justice issue. As psychology is currently framed um, or with a psychological um, with the psychological theories that are currently in place, seeing psychology um, from a political, a structural, a systemic lens doesn't happen a lot. So hence the moving to the critical side of it. I also work in areas where there's uh, chronic violence and protracted conflict. And I'm honored to be here today. Uh, today's session is going to be very interactive. We are going to learn from one another because there is no monopoly in knowledge. And I encourage you to participate as much as possible. I will also be telling the story of um, Tim and we will look at the demystification of stress through the story of Tim. Uh, so I encourage you to be all ears and to listen in. And we will also put in the chat box the story of Tim so that you can refer to it from time to time. Um, with your permission, Lynette and Alan, I think the slides can be shared. Yeah, they can. So there is the first slide we will be looking at demystifying stress, understanding what stress is through the life of Tim. Next slide, please. Again, like I said um, in the introduction, I didn't say this part, but I find this quote to be very true to me that uh, I will not be remembered as a woman who kept her mouth shut. That's also fine. Next slide, please. So we come to our first exercise, uh, which is called Flip It. I welcome you to get a pen and a paper if you can. So, or if you have a writing material and it has two sides, when you're ready, just show us by having your thumbs up and then we can continue with the exercise. Um, I don't know, I can't see any thumbs. Alan, can, can you see any thumbs up? Has anybody gotten a piece of paper. Um, not yet. I think they're, they're looking for them. <laughs> okay, good. So when we get a few thumbs up, you can let me know and we can proceed. We are looking for pen, a pen and a piece of paper to be able to do this exercise. It's called flip it. 
Once you get your pen and paper ready, please show us by having giving us a thumbs up that you're ready to go. If you cannot find a pen and a piece of paper, but you have a place where you can write, whether it's on your phone, um, or on your hand, so you have your hand and a pen, but not a piece of paper, also give us a thumbs up. Salim, thank you. Uh, you say you're ready. Two more people together with Salim, then we can go. Thank you, Javan. You also say you're ready in the chat box. Ah, and Steven, okay, oh. Asante. Uh, so for this exercise, and I hope everybody else who's coming in, uh, at this point, please look for a pen and a piece of paper uh, to write, or you can even use your, your hand or your phone to write. So for this exercise, it is a reframing exercise and I invite you to now write on one side of the piece of paper, write obstacle. And thank you, Bahati. You also say you're ready. Um, so on one piece of paper, on the front side of the piece of paper, write obstacle. And as you write the title obstacle, think of an obstacle that comes to mind. It could be anything from an argument you had in the morning, maybe on your way to work, um, or a disagreement that you've had with uh, maybe somebody at the gate on your way, like somebody you've interacted with in the morning. Think of something that has been an obstacle. Maybe it's looking at um, the amount of money left for the month and realizing there's more month than the amount of money. Think of an obstacle and write down the obstacle that comes to mind, either as a complete sentence or one word. So like for me, if the obstacle is, there's more month left than the amount of money, I could write on my piece of paper, the obstacle is being broke. So let's go ahead and think about the obstacles and then write them down on one side of the piece of paper. I'm going to give us a few minutes. Write down the obstacle that you're going through as a complete sentence or just one word.
So if you write it, you should have your paper like this with an obstacle written on it. Then take your piece of paper and flip it. So turn to the other side of the paper that is clean and write the opportunity. The title, Opportunity. And then think about your obstacle and write what opportunity does it give you. What opportunity does the obstacle present? Is there anybody who wants to share in the chat box what has come up for them, what obstacles they've identified and what opportunities they've identified as well? Anybody who wants to share, you can uh, raise your hand to have your mic unmuted or you can chat, you can text it in the chat box. Thank you, Bahati. You say the obstacle is an argument and the opportunity is time to reflect deeply. And I hope that deep reflection is not negative self-talk, but it's, thank you for sharing that. Um, somebody else, what came up for you? Uh, what obstacle did you, come up with and what opportunity presented itself. So Javan says obstacles, uh, uh, financial constraints and the opportunity is being aggressive with a job and contractual jobs and his art. Or at, I'm not sure that Javan is uh, a male or female uh, name. Um, and being uh, aggressive with their art, male. Okay, thank you. His art. So Victoria says the obstacle is fear of failure. The opportunity is a dependence on God. Um, Salim. Salim. Salim says the obstacle is finances. The opportunity is made me a thinker to come up with solutions. And then the solutions led to more finances. Nice. Um, yeah. So this is not just an exercise that can be used for this particular for this particular situation but every time you run into a hiccup you can take time to pause and ask yourself how can i then change the obstacle into an opportunity it takes practice but with time you can get there next slide please So I want to tell the story of Tim. Remember our topic was um, demystifying stress. 
and then it was understanding what stress is through the life of team. That was our topic for the day. I am happy to let you know that team is a tortoise. And he is the one whose story we are going to listen to very shortly. So here goes the story of Tim the tortoise. Tim was born into a loving family of Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise. Throughout his childhood, he knew he was loved. His parents, the most graceful in the way they handled things in the animal kingdom, were respected. And this meant that Tim and his family were always in good standing with other animals in the animal kingdom. Often, Tim would play in the open fields, going with his parents in search of green leafy vegetables to eat, then retreat to their home, where they would take off their shells and relax after a long day outside. When Tim started animal school, he was scared. He didn't look like the mighty elephant, he wasn't as cunning and as funny as the rabbit, and neither did he have a strong sense of smell like the fox. His mother, in a bid to encourage him, reminded him that he would always be taking his shell with him to school. And when he felt scared, he should remember that he had one of the toughest shells in the animal kingdom. This reminder put Tim at a little ease. He was now looking forward to going to school and just felt a little timid. After a while, Tim, made, Tim had made many friends and was a pro at going to school alone. He enjoyed learning and playing with his friends. One day while at school, Tim and his friends saw a shiny object near the school fence. They had to investigate. They ran excitedly near the fence, following the shiny object. Once close by, his friend, the fox, told him not to go any closer. He didn't trust the object. But Tim, in his gracious ways, continued to follow the shiny object. Then, bam, he was caught by the poachers who were hiding behind the school fence. As Tim yelled for help, Fox, his friend, went back to class to call the teacher to help with the situation. Madame Elephant blew her trumpet loud and proud, making the animal kingdom war cry for poachers. The other animals on hearing it ran towards the school. Others, especially the buffalo soldiers, guarded the exit paths out of the animal kingdom. As swiftly as they had grabbed team, the poachers were grabbed by the soldiers and Tim was handed back to his parents, who were very grateful to have him back. When he got home, however, Tim refused to remove his shell, as was custom. And for that night, his parents let him sleep in it as he only felt safe there. The story of Tim is also posted in the chat box. Um, The story of Tim is also posted in the chat box and um, I hope we all had it. Um, you can click on the link and read because now as we get into the presentation, we will follow through the life of Tim and see how stress impacted Tim's life. But before we go there, what is stress? Next slide, please. Yes, so let's define stress. So stress is the body's natural response to any demand or challenge, whether it's physical, emotional, or mental, and it can manifest into feelings of tension, pressure. Yeah, just stay, stay on that slide, Alan, thank you. And it can manifest uh, as feelings of tension, pressure, or overwhelm in response to various situations. 
So there's two types of stress. You know, usually when we talk about stress, we only think the bad stress, you know, like I need stressed, and it's always something negative. But there's also positive stress. And so this positive stress is called the use stress. A new stress refers to positive stress that arises from situations perceived as exciting, challenging, or motivating. For example, when Tim was stressed about going to school, that was a kind of new stress. Um, but then, um, like starting new projects, preparing for a presentation, taking a leadership role, that's new stress. But then there's distress, which we by default just call stress. Distress, on the other hand, is negative stress that is caused by situations perceived as threatening, harmful, or overwhelming. Examples of distress are facing discrimination, experiencing harassment, or dealing with a burnout from overwork. With these two new definitions, use stress and distress, please identify and you feel free to unmute yourself and uh, no, raise your hand so that you can be unmuted by Alan to speak. Uh, what comes to mind when you think use stress? What are some of the positive stresses that you have in your life? You can also type in the chat box. Uh, positive stress that is there in your life. Anybody? Maybe we can reflect on that as we move into the next slide. Um, so we now know what stress is, but what is stress not? So what is stress not? So stress is not a sign of weakness. Experiencing stress does not mean somebody is weak or incapable. Stress is a natural response to challenging situations and is experienced by everyone at some point in their lives. Stress is not always av avoidable. Acknowledging that in certain situations, such as advocating for human rights or engaging in civil society activities, stress may be inevitable. The importance of learning and this uh, highlights the importance of learning if effective uh, ways to manage stress rather than trying to avoid it altogether. Stress is also not a permanent state. Stress is temporary and it comes in either small waves or big waves and can be managed by the right strategies. Stress is a natural part of life that can be navigated with resilience and support. Stress is also not a reflection of failure. Experiencing stress does not mean that you failed in your efforts. Stress is a common reaction to challenging circumstances and doesn't diminish your dedication, commitment, strength, or resilience, or even commitment to a cause. Stress is not something to be ashamed of. It is a universal experience and there's no shame in seeking support or assistance when feeling overwhelmed. When you have felt stressed, oh, thank you, Brenda. Brenda wrote uh, about the use stress in, um, in the chat box and she said, uh, positive stress, having money, 
what unashindwa kujipanga nayo oh that is a good problem having money but then you cannot financially plan yourself that is a, that is very positive so again reflecting uh, and like i said this is going to be a very interactive session experiential where you learn from me as i learn from you so as we think about what stress is not and we think about times that we have tried or been in a position where we needed to seek assistance and maybe felt ashamed that if we sought assistance we would be you know uh, be seen to be less than um i would encourage us to reflect on such times uh next slide please so let's look at the impact of stress stress has impact on our physical health and our emotional health and our mental health as well so if the effects of uh, stress on our physical health could be that we get physical ailments and we run the increased risk of getting cardiovascular diseases we have low immune systems and that makes us susceptible to illnesses it gives us digestive system uh upsets and gives us muscle tension and headaches just get to stress alafu ngongo inakuma all of a sudden my shoulders um the effects of stress on our mental health is anxiety um panic i'm sure maybe you had somebody say i had a i i had a panic like panic episode um there's sometimes there's depression there's mood disorders there's burnout there's emotional exhaustion there's impaired cognitive functions and difficulty concentrating those are the effects of stress on the mental health but then there, there's stress that's periodic and then there's long term chronic stress so sometimes because of the nature of work especially if you work in the human uh, rights human as a human rights defender or in the civil society there's chronic stress continuously you are exposed to stress so at this, at that time prolonged exposure to stress can lead to um increased risk of developing chronic conditions such as hypertension and diabetes accelerated aging at the cellular level impaired memory and cognitive decline decreased in the quality of life and overall well-being so stress management is essential for mitigating this long-term effects and promoting resilience um as human rights uh, defenders and civil society what we should know is we should recognize the unique stressors that we face and advocate for organizational support and resources to address and promote well-being within these communities we should also encourage open dialogue and the creation of supportive networks to help individuals cope with the challenges they face but going back to stress and the story of team Oh nice um going back to to stress and the impact of stress on health on physical health mental health um and going back to the story of team i want to ask was team stressed do we think team was stressed please type in the chat box if you think tim was stressed and what was stressing him what stress did he have did he have distress or did he have you stress
Oh, Nancy, what, how much have you lost? How much information have you lost? There's also the story of Tim here. So Victor says he was stressed and the stress was distress. Anyone else, what type of stress do we think team had? Oh, okay. Uh, um, I could repeat the story of team. It's quite a short story. So this is the story of Tim the tortoise. Tim was born into the loving family of Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise. Throughout his childhood, he knew he was loved. His parents, the most graceful in the way they handled things in the animal kingdom, were respected. And this meant that Tim and his family always had good standing with other animals in the kingdom. Often, Tim would play in the green fields, going with his parents in search of green leafy vegetables to eat, then retreat to their home, where they would take off their shells and relax after a long day outside. When Tim started animal school, he was scared. He didn't look like the mighty elephant. He wasn't as cunning and as funny as the rabbit, and he didn't have a strong sense of smell like the fox. His mother, in a bid to encourage him, reminded him that he would be taking off his he would be taking his shell with him to school. And when he felt scared, he should remember that he has one of the toughest shells in the animal kingdom. This reminder put little Tim at ease. He was going, he was looking forward to going to school. He just felt a little timid. After a while, Tim had many friends and was a pro at going to school alone. He enjoyed learning mostly. He enjoyed learning and mostly playing with his friends. One day while at school, his friend saw a shiny object near the school fence. They had to investigate. They ran excitedly towards the fence, following the shiny object. Once close by, his friend, the fox, told him not to go any closer as he didn't trust the object. But Tim, in his gracious ways, continued to follow the shiny object. Then, bam, he was caught by the poachers who were hiding behind the school fence. As Tim yelled for help, Fox, his friend, went back to class to call the teacher to help with the situation. Madame Elephant blew, blew her trumpet loud and proud, making the animal kingdom war cry for poachers. The other animals, on hearing it, ran towards the school. Others, especially the buffalo soldiers, guarded the exit paths of the animal kingdom. As soon as they had grabbed Tim, the poacher, as, as swiftly as he had grabbed Tim, the poacher was grabbed by the soldiers and Tim was handed back to his parents, who were very grateful to have him back. When, we, when he got home, however, Tim refused to remove his shell as was custom. And for that night, his parents let him sleep, sleep in it as he felt safe there. Have we all heard the story of Tim now? Thumbs up in the chat box if we have. Malim says yes. Anybody else who has had the story of Tim? Nancy says yes. Victor says yes. And so the question is, was Tim stressed? 
Oh, it's Victoria, Victor. <laughs> Victoria. Okay, sorry, Victoria. Sorry for calling you Victor. Yes, Victoria. Um, so the question is, was team stressed? And um, somebody had earlier said, yeah, Victoria had said he, he was stressed and he had distress. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't you stress. And then Salim says, Tim was just living in fear. He wasn't stressed. Then I think it's Brenda. Yes, Brenda says, I think it is distress. So at what point was it distress? And if you, if you can unmute yourself, and speak, uh, or if you can raise your hand and speak. Ah, so Victoria says it became distress because it came from a traumatic experience. Victoria, before we get to the end of the story, at the very beginning of Tim's life, did Tim experience stress? And was it distress or eustress? Right as Tim was going to school, preparing to go to animal school, did Tim experience stress? And was it distress or eustress? before we come to the distress he experienced at the end, because you're right, he did experience distress from that um, incident. Ah, in the beginning, it was you stress. Ah, it was eustress because he had everything, but he was still feeling lonely. Distress because he was just anxious to join school. Okay. So it was eustress because he had everything and he was still feeling lonely. At the very beginning of Tim's story, where we find that... Um, he was supposed to go to school, but he felt scared and timid and even compared himself to other animals like the elephant, the fox, the rabbit, and he didn't have anything these other animals had. But then the mother reminded him that he had one of the toughest shells in the animal kingdom. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. So when Tim found himself in a stressful situation, it would be important to recognize some of the 
stressful situations that you can find yourself in. And these stressful situations sometimes don't have to be situations that are in the here and now. They don't have to be present situations. They could be situations that look like situations we've been in before. So it could be situations that trigger us. Um, and how do we recognize stressful situations? So number one, it's by identifying uh, common triggers of stress. Um, and triggers of stress could include, you know, witnessing or experiencing uh, human rights violations, facing uh, threats, intimidation, or harassment for activism, uh, dealing with an uh, organ, uh, dealing with organizational challenges such as funding cuts and bureaucratic hurdles, balancing multiple responsibilities and commitments. Um, going back to your own life as a, a civil society actor, what common types of situations quickly become stressful. And in this case, it's not just you stress, it's particularly distress. What does this look like? What situations quickly come up to you as stressful situations? What situations happen? And even at the beginning of it, you can start to see like they're going to be stressful situations. Um, what are the signs and symptoms that you start to look out for um, when you are experiencing these situations? Um, and what role does self-awareness play? So before we look at the other two, the signs and symptoms and the role of self-awareness, Let's write in the chat box. Like I said, it's going to be very interactive today. So let's write in the chat box and you feel if you feel like you can unmute yourself and speak, that will also be okay. You can do that. You can unmute yourself and speak. Uh, but let's write in the chat box. What, what are some of these situations that we find ourselves in as civil society actors, and immediately they start, you can tell that you're going to be stressed. Uh, and it's distress in this particular case um, in regards to our ways of working. So Nancy says, writing many proposals and none of them goes through and also a lack of funding. So if every time you have to write another proposal, uh, Nancy, what goes through your mind? Um, Javan says, arrests of comrades and masses, violations that happen without regards for human rights. 
that is um, the demolitions in Madare and areas termed to be inhabitable and near rivers by the government right now. So these are situations that are stressful. We've recognized them. But then there are situations that lead up to this. So anytime Nancy is sent for a call for proposals and she looks at it and she thinks to herself, will it be another one um, like the, the other ones that I have applied for? And every time it rains and every time it floods or every time you're near, you pass by a place where there's a river and you ask yourself, is this riparian land? Um, and Nancy says, so when she receives a call for proposal, well, you just have to write, believing that one of them will be approved and funds will come. You can't give up. And we can already start to see that narrative formation, the, the, the ways in which we talk to ourselves. Um, Edwin says, I hope the name is Edwin. Yes, Edwin says, too much expectations from the community in terms of fighting for their rights and also supporting them economically. Steven says, frustrations from bosses without, with some undermining your efforts with little to no appreciation, that is all stressful. Bulldozing the struggles from your fellow HRDs So the community wants one thing, your bosses want something else. Um, and then you, you just can't give up. It's, it's not one of the options that's available on the table, at least according to Nancy, you know? And it's looking at this narrative and saying, Where did that come from? How did I make that meaning? How was it informed? Was it informed by my culture? Was it, is it something that I innately know? Was, I, was it taught to me? Did I hear people saying it when I was growing up? Um, where did that come from? The narrative of um, you can't give up and how does that narrative also contribute to how stressed or how stressful things can get. Um, so when you're going through all these things that have been written in the chat box, and thank you for contributing. Um, when you start to go through all these things, so when you have to write one more proposal and you don't want to give up, but you're thinking even the last one didn't go anywhere. And when you, you pass by a a place where on the road uh, there is a bridge and you ask yourself, is this riparian land? And are these houses going to be demol demolished? And when you see uh, human rights abuses happening by the very government that should be protecting human rights, um, you start to question a lot of what is going on. And as that is happening, there is and you're getting frustrated and you're getting into a place of distress, then you start to have physical signs and symptoms. And sometimes the signs and symptoms will come even before you realize the situation is becoming distressful. So some of the signs and symptoms of stress are the physical symptoms, uh, which are the headaches, the muscle tension, fatigue, sleep disturbances, you know, you could also have emotional symptoms such as anxiety, irritability, mood swings, uh, feelings of overwhelm. And then you could also have behavioral symptoms, which is the change of appetite, social withdrawal, increased use of substances, um, 
like tobacco, alcohol, uh, caffeine, and other things. So between the physical, emotional, and behavioral symptoms, which of these symptoms do you sometimes see manifest in yourself for you to know that, you know, I have, this situation is becoming stressful. I will give you an example. If I'm in a, in a verbal exchange with somebody, because I will not call it an argument. If I'm in a verbal exchange with someone and I start to feel the tips of my ears get hot, then I know it's time to walk away from that conversation. And I think that one is physical. Javan says, behavioral kwasana. So what, what comes up for you? What comes up for you? Is it behavioral? Is it physical? Is it emotional? Which these signs and symptoms make you know that, eh, apo, apo imefika, uh-uh, watcha tu ni take a step back. Feel free, you can unmute yourself and speak or you can type it in the chat box. So Stephen says, shutting out people and expressing are less defensive and expressing or and expressing less as a defense mechanism. So it's both behavioral and emotional because you're first defend you're defending yourself before even anything else. So immediately you cut people off that that could be emotional and behavioral because you will not even give them access. Javan says, I get easily irritated and simply withdraw from a conversation that needs uh, that need my full attention as I seem to be off the screen. So again, it's behavioral and it's um it's behavioral and it's emotional. Uh, Nancy says, for me, it's emotional because I always find myself crying. Mama, Boba, Dogo. Ata yo, iko sawa. Ni emotional na kuna physical release by just the crying. Your energy na toka. Anybody else, feel free to type in the chat box and thanks for those who are sharing. Um. Continue to tell us how these physical signs and symptoms. So does this mean that Nikki Mukiona Niki Niki Lia Kwanza, for example, you could first cry before you know how much that situation ilikusumbua. And then when you cry, then you realize whether your situation ilinisumbua sana. Or you withdraw from a situation and then without even knowing you're doing it, but when you catch yourself doing it, then you realize, hey, yeah. is that true? That you can first engage in this behavior, physical, emotional, in this reactions before even recognizing how stressful the situation is.
is it true? Is it true that you find yourself behaving in a certain way first and then recognizing later that the behavior, maybe after self-reflection, that the behavior was caused by something being distressful? Do we think that is true? Thank you, Nancy. You say you think it's true. Um, thank you for the participation on the signs and symptoms of stress because self-awareness is important. Uh, as the persons who have shared on the chat box have demonstrated, um, they have demonstrated a sense of self-awareness, being able to recognize stress and the um stress signs and symptoms in themselves and how uh, the and the things that actually trigger them. Um, when you find yourself in this situation, what you need to do is to seek support. Um, and stress can be easier to manage with the support of others um, reaching out to trusted friends and family members and colleagues for emotional support and understanding. Um, if we look back at the life of Tim, when Tim was in a stressed situation, who did Tim reach out to? And what type of support did he find? Who did Tim reach out to? And what type of support did he find? Remember the story of Tim the tortoise? Who did Tim reach out to and what type of support did he find? Please write in the chat box or unmute yourself and speak. Stephen, I say you say in the chat box that yes, sometimes you lose, you find yourself losing composure only to realize later that you could have handled the situation better than how you did. Thank you for that. So remember the story of Tim the tortoise. Um, yeah, so in the in the story of Tim, where did he go for support when he was stressed? And who are the people who supported him? So Nancy said his mother and the mother tried to show him that even though he doesn't have all the other features that the other animals have, he is special because of his shell. Yes. Thank you, Nancy, for that. It's true. My mother helped. I also think um, his friend, the fox, when he warned him um, that he shouldn't go to the to the poachers, um, because at that time maybe the following of the shiny object was useless. You know. Next slide, please. Ah, 
Somebody else says, Bahati says, the elephant made a loud noise and all the animal kingdom was tensed and reacted. Yes. So the elephant, uh, Madam Elephant, the teacher, also helped Tim when he was in a distressed situation. Thank you for that, Bahati and Nancy. Um, so how do we respond to stress? We've already been stressed. We are having physical symptoms. We are looking for support from our friends, our mothers, our organizations, our family members, um, from even within ourselves. We're looking for assistance. Oh, uh, Bahati uh, says, Team sleeping with his shell on that night after the incident for him uh, meant recovery. Um, yeah, so let's look at the response to stress. And we'll go back to Tim's story. But before we go back to Tim's story, let's look at the image in front of us. What do we see there in that in the in either picture? What what do we see happening? What and what do we think is the story behind what we're seeing? You can raise your hand and get unmuted, or you can just type in the chat box. What do we think is happening? What do we think is happening in the picture? So Bahati says, Bahati says, this man here is kind of stressed by the wives. And so he's recuperating uh, with music and alcohol. And then Edwin says, the family is sympathizing with the boy. Um, then Libby says somebody is being comforted uh, Bahati says again Bahati says the other pick is probably someone in grief and so he's been consoled the right uh, he might have lost his wife um, Nancy says that picture on the right it shows uh, there a man who is stressed because one for one reason or another, the people around him try. Uh, there are people around him trying to console him. Javan says in the first picture. In the first picture, it is one swallowed in stress, but all alone, and indulging in his coping mechanisms. Thank you for introducing the word coping mechanisms, Java. And I'm wondering, are they both responding to stress? 
just a quick thumbs up. In the second, the same situation, but with the community in the know and responding to the situation by being available. Thank you, Javan, for raising that. That in one picture, he's alone. And in the other picture, he has community. Um, and I'm wondering, are they both responding to stress? The first picture is also a guy who's trying to enjoy himself. Basically, he is a raster man. From one end, um, and, and uh, Abahati says, yes, they're both responding to stress. Um, Nancy says, the first picture is also a guy trying to enjoy himself is basically a raster man, a really called lyrical farmer. That is such a cool name. Uh, says from one end, I see every man for himself concept. On the other end, I see unity and support. So let's get into, let's get into that. So what are some of the strategies for managing stress? You could go either way. You could go with frame one on your extreme left. So the guy with his, whatever he's smoking, it could be a cigarette, it could be something else. And he's drinking something. It could also be tea, water, soup, alcohol. Um, and that's one way of coping. So you could use ill coping mechanisms, but you would be coping nonetheless. Um, and the other side is also a coping mechanism where you could be open and vulnerable and have community support you. Um, so when you go through stressful situations that we've already identified and recognized, then you can choose for yourself what the strategies for managing that type of distress. So explore various uh, strategies that can help individuals cope with reducing stress. Um, and this include deep breathing and mindfulness exercises to promote relaxation and reduce anxiety. Physical activity such as walking, yoga, uh, dancing, running, jogging. Um, and to release tension and boost mood. Uh, prioritizing self-care, um, yep, but sometimes self-care is community care. And there, there's no, com there's no self-care where the community doesn't care about you. So things like sleep, trying to eat uh, a balanced diet, and engaging in hobbies and activities that bring joy. Um, setting up goals that are measurable and that are sometimes realistic and boundaries, especially boundaries to avoid becoming overwhelmed by other commitments. You know, you say yes to everything because you don't want to miss out on anything. Um, And then you find that you do not have time for anything. I see in the chat box, somebody has said nothing here there to suggest he's a raster man. It was just an observation that was made by somebody else. Um, and then Zipporah also says she believes uh, she believes that they're both uh, responding to stress. So back to the strategies for managing stress. Um, they could be, you could do all this 
uh, things that I just mentioned, but there's also space for social support. And social support is very, very important. And it's about leaning on your networks. Again, like the image on the right, the individual on the right seems to be consoled by members of his community or members of his support system. They look like they're there for him and he's shared something vulnerable. So putting his hands in his face and having a moment to be vulnerable and to show up as he indeed is feeling. Um, this vulnerability only comes after you foster a community and a community that shows solidarity with peers and colleagues who can share similar experiences and challenges, or maybe just share similar experiences of humanity, not necessarily of the particular workplace or space that you work in. And provi providing opportunities for peer support and mutual aid within the civil society community. Uh, CSOs and uh, CSO workers and human rights defenders a lot of the times go through really traumatic uh, and stressful experiences that need handholding and need communities that understand the, the unique challenges that they go through. And for these communities to grow and to be spaces that allow people to come as they are and provide the support that they need. Um, then there's the most important one while responding to stress. It's the um, self-compassion and acceptance. You know, um, sometimes you're too harsh on yourself. I remember there was that comment that you cannot give up. Um, so in periods that are very stressful, I think it is important to practice self-compassion. Um, it is also important to accept difficult emotions and experiences without judgment or self-criticism or negative self-talk. Uh, and also the importance of treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would treat others. Another way to respond to stress is with flexibility and understanding. Stressful situations may require flexibility and, adapt and adaptability in response. Um, I encourage you to embrace change and uncertainty as opportunities. Um, as a, I am sorry, I encourage you to embrace change and uncertainty as an opportunity for growth and learning. And, you know, the stress uh, provides you with um, a space to develop resilience and to develop coping skills that work for you in particular situations, you know. Uh, and finally, I think it is important to as a means of responding to stress as civil society and human rights defenders, we need to encourage help-seeking behavior. So within our circles, within ourselves, within our families, we need to normalize help-seeking behavior to reduce stigma, not just from others, but also from ourselves, because we do self-stigmatize a lot. So we can reduce stigma that you know, we stigmatize ourselves and we encourage help-seeking behavior um, around mental health concerns um, and foster a culture of openness and support within the community uh, to help facilitate access um, when it's needed the most. And having said that, and having looked at those different ways of responding to stress. And going back to Tim's story, Tim the tortoise, 
I'm wondering whether the animal kingdom had encouraged um, help-seeking behavior and whether team had a community that they would go to when they felt uh, stressed. Did the animal kingdom, going back to Tim's story, did the animal kingdom encourage help-seeking behavior? And did Tim, uh, and did Tim have, uh, did the animal kingdom support Tim? Did they have uh, a community supporting them? I can post back the story of Tim in the chat box. Feel free to raise your hand and unmute yourself. To raise your hand so that you can be unmuted to speak. Or or just type in the chat box. Do you think that the animal kingdom encouraged help seeking behavior in the story of team? Ah, Nancy says, yes, they did. We saw when the elephant made noise for the other animals to know something was wrong. Yes, and she responded immediately. I have posted the story in the link in the chat box. Yes. Um, I have posted the story in the chat box. Uh, thank you, Nancy. So, that, yes, at the animal kingdom supported help seeking behavior. And we see how even the reaction of the buffalo soldiers, um, the reaction of uh, the fox, when the fox immediately ran up to Madame Elephant and said um, that Tim was taken by the poacher. And the fact that the poacher did not even leave the confines of the animal kingdom. Okay, next slide, please. If you have not read the story of Tim, I invite you to read the story of Tim. It is posted in our chat box. Um, I also want us to get comfortable as you're going to do a visualization, a visual exercise for you stress. I hope we are all able to sit as comfortably as we can sit and that we feel supported by whatever we are sitting on. So whether we're sat on the ground, whether we are sat on a chair, I hope it's a chair that supports you, that your feet are comfortable, that your back feels supported as we get ready to go into the visualization exercise. I encourage you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. 
You don't have to close your eyes. You just have to breathe and think about your breath as you do it. You can feel the, the air. Is it warm? Is it cold? Is it crisp? Is it smoky? How is the air that you're breathing? And as you do that, as you become very intentional about your breathing in and your breathing out, you will start to notice your breathing is slowing down. With your breathing slow, I want to invite you to visualize yourself in a situation that is challenging, yet you're so confident in your delivery. A situation that will require you to do your very best, but you don't doubt your abilities. Vividly imagine the sights and the sounds. Where are you? What are you doing? What have you been requested to participate in? See your surrounding. Notice the sound. Notice the sensation. Focus on the feelings of excitement. Focus on your feeling of determination. Focus on your feeling of achievement. Envision yourself overcoming any obstacle you get to doing this task with ease. Drawing on your strengths and skills to navigate the situation with confidence and grace. As you sit in this situation, this situation where you've been given something challenging to do, yet you're confident in your abilities. As you feel this, as you imagine the sight, the sounds, the sensations from the experience, as you focus on your feelings of excitement and determination and achievement, as you envision yourself overcoming the obstacles with ease and drawing on your strength and skills to navigate the situations with confidence and grace, notice I invite you to notice how your body responds to what you're now visualizing. Feel free to write in the chat box. How your body is responding to that visualization? How does it feel? What are your energy levels like? How much focus do you feel that you have?
feel free to type in the chat box or raise your hand and Alan will unmute you to speak. Thank you, Victoria. You say peace, joy, and tranquility. Somebody else, who else did the visualization exercise? What were the sensations in your body when you saw yourself doing that challenging thing, but something that you're competent in? How did it feel? How does it feel when you navigated it with ease? and confidence and grace. One more person. Uh, Pamela, Pamela says, relaxed and calm. Stephen says, calmness, contentment, and happiness. Um, Nancy says, at ease, fresh, and relaxed. Lyrical Farmer says, it's great. I feel powerful and of value. Zipora, Zipora says, calm. Um, Let's go back to Tim. If Tim did this exercise, Tim the tortoise, if he did this exercise, how do we think Tim would feel? Most importantly, would he be able to come out of his shell? If Tim did this exercise, would he be able to come out of his shell? Victoria says, yes. Oh, Nancy says she feels confident. Uh, he, he would feel confident and relaxed. Would he be able to come out of his shell? Stephen says, Yes, he would. Next slide, please. So I want us to look at the stress curve analogy. Uh, what you have in front of you is the normal curve, you know, um, and small, there's one big normal curve that has beginning, middle, and end. And then there's small normal curves running throughout the big normal curve. I invite you to think about stress in this way. This is the analogy of the stress curve. Stress is essentially anything that puts pressure on our normal ability to deal with challenges. It is not necessarily bad. Uh, and we've already talked about positive stress, use stress, and negative stress, distress. 
So think of a car running smoothly along a road, then it hits a bump. If it has good shock absorbers, it recovers quickly and continues along the smooth ride. These shock absorbers are vital for reducing impact. However, if they are worn out, the car has trouble dealing with these bumps and the ride becomes much rougher. Think about our daily, think, think of our daily life as that road. It has its own bumps and its own stresses. Usually, we, be, we experience a natural ebb and flow in dealing with them. So this, either these small ripples or one big one. If we usually, if we, if we have one big one that has a start, a middle and an end, and we navigate that, the, the, the normal curve, if it's the big one, we, we just go with the flow, like it's normal, it's natural. It's what we're used to. But if it's every, every other minute, if it's like this, this continuous onslaught can be harmful to our mental, physical, and social health. If the stress is too intense or too persistent, we don't manage it well and can get Dark. This and could get stuck, and this is when it turns to trauma. When our stress response either is stuck in the on position because we are always experiencing stress and and waiting for it to come, or we get stuck in the off position where like we had discussed earlier, there are things that just happen and we start to know, uh, I am getting too stressed and I need to walk away from this or, I'm, or I am expecting this to stress me so I need to behave in a certain way. So we are either stuck in the on position making us constantly alert or in the off position making us feel withdrawn and detached. And this disrupts the natural flow handling stress. My question would be, what stress, what type of stress did Tim experience? Was it one big one or did he experience a continuous onslaught of stressors? What stress did Tim experience? Did he experience one big wave and then he, he had a normal kind of stress and then another one? Or was he like constantly in the stress loop? Where do we think Tim was? Where do we think Tim was? Did he have one big stress moment or was he constantly experiencing stress? As we think about that, let's move to the next slide, please. So Nancy says he was con consistently experiencing stress. I think he experienced a big stress change when he was doing, uh, when he was joining animal school and then he had a brief break. And then he experienced another big stressor when he was abducted by the poachers. And then he had a break when he got saved. And he was taken back home where he refused to come out of his shell because he was now um, 
scared. So maybe at that point between the poachers, it was consistent. So Victoria also is of the opinion it was consistent because he, he couldn't even come out of the shell. So that one incident was really, really traumatic. Um, let's look at the importance of balance. Why is balance important? Um, it's you stress, it's it's you stress, it's distress, then it's moments of ease, it's moments of ease, it's you stress, it's moments of ease, then distress. Why is that balance important? Uh, why is finding balance important? The significance of balance is um, the significance of balance is maintaining uh, a healthy life and promotion of overall well-being. Finding balance allows individuals to manage stress effectively while also nurturing their physical, emotional, and mental health. So what are some of the strategies for, for finding balance? We had mentioned some of this. So prioritizing self-care, and not just self-care, but also community care, having a community that looks out for you and looks out for the other people, uh, setting boundaries to protect yourself, practicing mindfulness to cultivate present moment awareness. Because sometimes you get worried about things either in the future or things in the past. Um, and this reduces uh, stress and reactivity. Seeking support from friends and families and colleagues. Tailoring strategies to fit your individual needs and be contextually and culturally relevant to you and to the communities that you serve. Uh, the other one is uh, monitoring your stress levels, looking at where you're at in terms of stress, knowing if I cross a certain threshold, I should be able to seek for support. And then cultivating resilience. Um, through practices like what we just did, the positive thinking, problem solving, and seeking social support. Um, and finally, it's community and really building a community that allows you to be who you are, where you are, as you are, and supporting you when even they notice that something is, is not as it should be or as it has been. Um, yes, so Nancy says exercising, eating a balanced diet, all those things. So the question I would finally ask in regards to Tim is how can Tim find balance? And maybe he can start with diet, and, no, not diet, exercising and eating a balanced diet. Maybe Tim can start there. But how else do we think Tim can find balance? Next slide, next slide, please. Any questions? Thank you for listening to me for the last one hour, two minutes, any questions? And what should team do to find balance? What should team do to find balance?
Pamela says, team can find balance by appreciating small wins and positive thinking. So the question, Javan, is how can team find balance? How can he, now he's, he doesn't want to come out of his shell. He's had a traumatic experience. We don't know what will happen when he goes back to school. Will he want to play near the field? Will he want to come near the fence? Will he accept to come out of the house? Remember, he was already scared about going to school. I have so many questions about Tim and whether he ever went back to school. But before I can figure it out, how do we think Tim can find balance? And if you have any questions, comments, queries, feel free to raise your hand and unmute yourself and speak. So Victoria says, focusing more on the fact that he's safe instead of worrying about the future. Yes, Victoria. So bringing him back into the here and now, ensuring that he comes back to the present moment. That's a good one. Um, somebody else? Uh, Javan says, taking his mistake positively and working on mechanisms that can help him be safe and that does not necessarily depend on him alone. Yes, and I wonder whether it was an actual mistake because there was also the poacher on the other end. What was the poacher doing in the animal kingdom? Uh, Lyrical Farmer says, self-awareness would be... <laughs> Would, uh, would help team find balance. Uh, Bahati says, when you own a problem, it becomes heavy and a burden to you. But when you choose to choose other people to own them, then it becomes easier. Speak out, share. Problem half shared is a problem half sold. Accept and chest out. And I think you should call on the rest of the animal kingdom to support them. Ah, so Pam has a question and it says, I, I would like to know how to help a friend with the small calves and he or she is very defensive and not willing. And I think you're already helping by being there. The fact that you're present to witness them go through the small calves that come at them all the time. I think um, presence so that when they're ready, you'll still be there. And the other thing is to continue to raise the awareness. But most importantly is to continue to to be there as a friend and that they know they can always come to you for their support. Um, Bahati says, when you own, no, I think we had already said that. Um, Fridas, Fridas Hussein says, accepting the presence of a challenge by identifying strategies to resolve it. Then Bahati says, Kwanza elephant and a Um Victoria says, take caution with a friend when a friend warns you of impending danger. Yeah, so you're saying he, he should have listened to the fox. Um, yeah, and I hope that we can continue to be there for our friends even when they don't speak, 
even when they don't listen. Um, so Nancy asks, how can you help someone who is an extrovert, if I am not wrong, those people who don't have friends, those ones are the introverts inside, introvert, extrovert, outside, those ones who are social. So, and I feel like she's stressed and she's currently not talking to any member of their family. Uh, this is a question similar to Palms, and I think connection, being there constantly so that when they're ready to speak, they will speak. Um, and continuing to raise the awareness, but in a non-threatening way. So maybe tell the story of Tim and ask how can Tim come out of their shell? Maybe Pamela would also um, use the same story and tailor make it so that it's also the same question. How non-threatening strategies to get individuals to speak and storytelling is a big one. So yeah, uh, I think at this point with one minute to go, I will give the meeting back to Lynette. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Yvonne. That has been a very engaging session. I have learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, um, especially the visualization exercises for you stress. Um, you have really calmed my spirits today. And also just um, understanding that we need to normalize uh, help-seeking behavior. It's really, really important. And also to learn um, to foster a culture of support. Like people just come through and if someone is going through something, just hold their hand because you might not know what people are going through. People are going through every every single day, kuna to stress trigger someone says just to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. Um so far so good. I think we have done well. Uh you as the facilitator, you have really you've taken your time, you have broken down the topic, and I have learned a lot. Definitely we'll be going back to this webinar again because this is not a topic that needs to stop at here. You also need to do a lot of practice. And also to our participants, thank you very much uh, for actively engaging the facilitator. Um, at least she's not felt like she's alone. <laughs> there, but you have really, really participated and we're really, really grateful. So for anyone else who would like um, the session for today, we shall have it uh, on our social media pages, uh, up and running today. Um, and if you have also any questions, you can just share with us and then we shall reach out to Yvonne and she can share. And if possible, in the future, she can come back again so that she can <laughs> she can also take us through another topic or even delve deeper on the stress. Because stress, I don't think it's a one-time thing that we need to, especially in these trying times uh, with the economy and um, the recurrent flood situation, I think we need more uh, emphasis and lessons and classes on how to cope and manage stress. Um, that being said, um, I wish you all a lovely, lovely Thursday and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah.